Florida Maki, normally, I very much enjoy watching your daily content on YouTube. It's thought-provoking and intelligent while still being entertaining. And over at the Patreon channel, it's even better. But yesterday, Florida Maki, you crossed a line. That title you put on your video about Joe Biden and nuclear weapons, clearly, that was misinformation, disinformation, fake news, meant to get people to click and engage. What do you have to say to that? Well, I can prove everything in the title was correct, and we're going to do that in today's video. But what if I told you that the powers that be that so many years ago were all about controlling misinformation, disinformation, have completely retreated from that battlefield? Many people haven't noticed this. Now, some might say, wait a minute. Hold on, they don't retreat at all. Oh, they have. They absolutely have. How many of you saw recently the Hunter Biden trial where it was all centered around information on a laptop that 51 intelligence officials signed a letter stating didn't exist and was Russian misinformation. But then all of a sudden, abracadabra, all of those super smart, know-everything intelligence officials ended up with egg on their face because the laptop did exist and it wasn't Russian misinformation. Now, if they could all get it wrong, how in the world could social media expect to sift through everything out there and make decisions? Well, what if I told you that before those 51 intelligence officials, somebody else knew what the real truth was? And they kept it to themselves, and nobody has asked them to account for it. Wait a minute. Hold on. We know they knew about the laptop, and they were lying about it, but you're saying that somebody knew even before the U.S. government that it was true? Absolutely. They knew a long, long time before those intelligence officials decided to lie about it, and they kept it to themselves, and nobody has called them before Congress Say, hey, how come you didn't tell us about this? You know who that was? Google. YouTube. Alphabet. I guarantee, I promise you, they knew the moment that laptop went online and they knew every bit, every byte, every piece of data on it, when it was on there, who put it on there, where it was, when the data was put on there, all of it. Google knows everything. If you're on a device and you're on the internet, they know about it. And they know everything to do with it. Now, people are like, wow, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Why has nobody, why has nobody said this? Well, it's battlefield of the mind. There are folks out there who have a vested interest in maintaining you in an emotional state so that you don't ask the right questions. It's very, very difficult to ascertain information properly, to create the right question, when you're continually bombarded by emotional assaults from the left and the right. We teach folks. We give them the tools. We show how you can identify the weapons and then mitigate them, disarm them, and take back control of your mind over the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. It's only one single U.S. dollar per month, even less if you sign up for an entire year, and fully and completely refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. If you don't take anything from it, you shouldn't have to pay for it. If you don't take anything from it, you shouldn't have to pay for it. That's my point. I've said before, if it was a quarter, if I could charge a quarter a month, I'd charge a quarter a month. The, the dollar is there just as a speed bump, and it's the lowest allowable level that I can charge. So would love to have you over there. God bless all of you who have signed up over there. Very much appreciate it. Now, real quick, let's clear the air. Let's see what I'm being accused of. Here is the video, and here's the title. President Joe Biden now threatens to nuke American cities if they don't vote for him this November. Now, some people have said, well, I don't like Joe Biden. I, you know, I know that he's kind of a power-hungry madman, but I think that might be a bridge too far. Not the case. 
Not the case. Because what is he actually saying here and has said and reiterated multiple times? Biden, quote, those who say, you know, the blood of patriots, you know, all this stuff about how we're going to have to move against the government and that's why we need rifles. If you think you need to have ballistic weapons and rifles to take on the government, you really need F-15s and maybe some nuclear weapons. Meaning that's the level to which he would be willing to take it to, quote unquote, protect democracy, right? to protect democracy. If he felt that there was some threat to his interpretation of what the federal government would be, and there were those taking up, say, AR-15s with 25-round magazines to stop what his vision was, he would have absolutely no problem violating the U.S. Constitution and something called posse comitatus. What I'm making, saying here is not being made up. What I'm saying here is not being made up. Biden attacks Trump as threat to democracy, warns against his re-election. U.S. President warns voters a day before the third anniversary of the January 6th protest on the U.S. Capitol. Now, real quick, what is posse comitatus? Posse comitatus, can the president use military force against U.S. citizens? In most cases, the president has requested the authority... Congress has sometimes given the president less than what he requested. Congress has also authorized the president to use the military forces or the militia, giant air quotes, domestically to put down insurrections or execute civilian law when certain criteria are met. So this is a real thing. In fact, here's a book written in 2015 by the Joint Advanced War Fighting School. I'm going to read this paragraph very quickly just so you know what the thinking is behind the, uh, basically, the deep state. The, posse, the, the title here is Posse Comitatus, an impediment, an impediment to our national security. Paperback written April 16th, 2015. The Posse Comitatus Act is often the so-called linchpin that bars the use of our military forces to support and enforce civil law within the borders of the United States. The act has, in effect, denied the citizens, in the opinion of the writer here, the act has, in effect, denied the citizens of the United States the utmost protection they should be afforded by the federal government by restricting the use of Department of Defense assets to be used as force multipliers to our federal law enforcement and intelligence agencies. The United States will be required to once again do more with less as federal spending is decreased on not only homeland defense, but its security as well. The federal government will need to effectively utilize the combined resources of its numerous departments in order to accomplish this endeavor. Currently, the misinterpretation, what most people are saying, meaning they don't believe that the vast majority of people know how to read the Constitution, of the Posse Comitatus Act and the addition of subsequent restrictions have degraded our ability to properly protect the homeland. The Posse Comitatus Act is an ambiguous and highly misinterpreted law. That need, it's a constitutional provision that needs to be rescinded and replaced with a new constitutional provision law that clearly identifies the terms in which the use of military forces in protecting the homeland is appropriate. This book focuses on the use of military forces in domestic affairs within the historical context of Posse Comitatus in the United States. The subsequent Posse Comitatus Act of 1878, the interpretation of the Posse Comitatus Act since its passage, and its current influence on the United States' ability to defend its homeland. The work is a historical case study of the Posse Comitatus Act to include recommendations for how to best use our nation's military forces in a non-wartime environment in order to better ensure our nation's security in a whole-of-government, remember that term, whole-of-government approach. 2005. Ten years before that book, should Congress scrap Posse Comitatus, U.S. Naval Institute? You see, there was a reason. There was a reason Posse Comitatus was put into place. We weren't even supposed to have, we were not even supposed to have a standing military to be used, to be used against the people of America or some perceived threat by a certain group of people within this country. 
And make no mistake, the current president believes that his number one challenger in the Republican Party is backed by a bunch of people who are a threat to democracy. So what I said is not misinformation, not disinformation. It is not in any way, shape, or form an overstatement. In fact, I would say now the threat to the liberty of Americans is at far greater peril than it was even during Lexington and Concord. You see, at that time, there was an entire wilderness that all of these people could have retreated to from the East Coast. They could have been a thousand miles from British control and been living in perfect liberty in what we would call now call the Louisiana Purchase, you know, and the unknown Western wilderness. They could have let, we, we don't have that ability like they did. They stood and fought. They stood and fought for the civilization they had built, but they still had a place to retreat to. We don't. We don't. Another quote from Hansi, President Hansi McPito Sniffer. You can't be pro-insurrectionist and pro-America. Democracy is on the ballot. Your freedom is on the ballot. You can't love your country only when you win. And I love how they love to run out Abraham Lincoln. The people of these United States, the people of these United States are the rightful masters of both Congresses and courts. Not to overthrow the Constitution, but to overthrow the men who pervert the Constitution. See, they forget that now. Here's where I lose a lot of folks. You should want giant throngs of ungovernable people with nothing to lose who aren't part of the system to back you up in this. Because the vast majority of Americans, domestic Americans, those who've been born here and been born here multiple generations, have a lot to lose. Nobody wants to lose their house. Nobody wants to lose their job. Nobody wants to lose their income. Have their car repossessed. Well, these people, these people are an army of of freedom. You see, they think they want the house, the car, the job, but a lot of them are realizing, oh my goodness, that comes at a terrible price in North America because the U.S. government then controls your entire life. And sad to say, there's only one state in the Union who has seen this and is now standing up and fighting back. This is what this is really about. States' rights. This is, about, this is all about states' rights. And the governor of a state being the ultimate authority when it comes to what goes on in that state as far as security procedures and what the people of that state want. Not the federal government. It's not their role. And let me quote this guy again. We can ban assault weapons and high-capacity magazines in this country once again. I got that done when I was a senator. It passed. It was a law for the longest time, and it brought down these, quote-unquote, mass killings. We should do it again, President Joe Biden. You see, he's not worried about that. He's not worried about that. See, he's not threatening to use F-15s and nuclear weapons against mass killers, is he? He's not worried about deploying the military to deal with school shooters. He's threatening to deploy the military to use nuclear weapons and F-15s against people, against people who might disagree with him. And his first stop, his first stop was to make sure he sicked the IRS on anyone transferring money on PayPal that was uh, over $600. Because he knew who his real enemy was. People who have businesses. People who work for themselves. People who have a mind to be independent. Second stop, make everything more expensive. Make it so hard on those people that they can't even afford to buy ammunition to go train at the range. Make it so hard financially on those people that they can't buy ammunition to go train at the range. 
See what's going on here? Now does my statement seem so uh, outrageous? I'll show it to you again. This should terrify anybody on any side of the spectrum when a president multiple times says, if you think you need to have weapons to take on the government, you need F-15s and maybe some nuclear weapons. My title, President Joe Biden now threatens to nuke American cities and their people if they don't vote for him this November. Is exactly rational, based on all the information that I've shown, that is entirely correct and is not in any way, shape, or form disinformation, misinformation, fake news, or clickbait. It's just the reality. And the laptop story proves it. The laptop story proves it. There are people out there who know things a lot more than you and me about what's going on behind the scenes. And if Google thought, that what I had titled that video was in any way, shape, or form provable disinformation, misinformation, don't you think? They, they wouldn't have even allowed me to post it. But they know. They know, and they're caught. They're stuck. Because factually, I can prove it. Factually, the current guy sitting in the, in the West Wing, Joe Biden, has a history of and has threatened to do things that they could have never imagined four or five years ago. I'll leave it there. God bless all of you. Agree, disagree, otherwise. Those of you who have supported us at Patreon, guys, there are not enough words for the amount of humility that I have for how many of you have shown up and helped me stay in a place where I can still speak, still be able to do this and make it be the primary focus of my life. You guys are making a difference in a way that um, is just uh, gets me a little emotional sometimes. I appreciate it so much. God bless all of you. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. Pray for each other. Lift each other up. Like, share, subscribe. See you guys next time.